So once again, giving. You know, it, now with the lunch with Lori, you you have something to give to somebody. Hey, they're getting a free lunch. They're also getting, or maybe it's the uh, the Zoom version where it's like, hey, we're all networking. You're, they're there meeting a ton of people, having real conversations. It's not this salesy thing. Now you've created a platform that other people now want to get on, and you're not you're not asking for anything. Now if something gets reciprocated through that, then great. It will. It will. <laughs> Actually, when I talk to people, I'll call my last point, which I didn't didn't plan this either. My platform is diverse. Mm. It isn't like all a uh, Brookfield Chamber, Brookfield businesses. Yeah, yeah. My turnaround management association, just turnaround people. I get from the hairdresser to the CEO, and that's one of the things that makes my Lunch of Lori events unique, is the diversity of who comes and the stories you hear from all walks of life. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Forever Podcast. It's your boy, your host, Jamar Jones. Um, I am the owner of Forever Media, a uh, speaker and author of a book called Change Your Circle, Change Your Life. This podcast is all about business and things that are personal because business is personal. And we have a special guest uh, here in the building. We got Lori Rifkin um, of Lunch, of Lori, L- Lunch with Lori. You're into a lot of stuff, though. Financial, I would say business guidance, consulting. I mean, you do a lot. And you got, you know, the excuse to have lunch with people. <laughs> that, that's true. And uh, first, thanks for having me on here. Yeah, welcome. And, welcome. Um, you know, we could, we're going to talk a little bit about introverts later on. I have another characteristic. I'm a broad generalist. That's why I'm into so many things, because I have an intense curiosity of life, and that drives you into a lot of different areas. But the bad part is everything's a shiny ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you start chasing them like, man, yeah, you're man. Chasing. <laughs> So you have to be more focused. Yeah. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about doing business as an introvert, which I feel like is a very interesting topic because most people think of business owners or even executives um, or people that are just in that business world, networking, sales, whatever, you got to be extroverted. And what's interesting is that we're both introverted. That is true. That is true because people don't really understand what the definition of being an introvert or extrovert is. It isn't necessarily you're introvert, you're shy, you don't want to talk to people. It's how you recover after you go to a room with a group of people. Introverts, they go to that room, a group of people, they could talk and be a functional extrovert, but when they go home, they need silence, sit in a chair, turn off sound, turn off lights, and they have to recharge their batteries. My wife, who's the perfect extrovert, she goes to that same event, comes home, has to call 40 girlfriends saying, <laughs> this person wore this, I met this person, I saw that. It's really just how you recover after an encounter for a group of people. Yeah, and they want to talk about it. You know, um, we, we got a um, guy on our team, Randy Walensky. I know you've met him uh, briefly. He loves to talk to people. He loves it. He, he, he craves it. And then afterwards, he just wants to keep talking about it, keep talking about it. I go out to it, like after we're done with an event or we're doing something, I'm like, leave me alone, man. What makes that? I don't want to talk to people. I want to hear people's stories. Mm. Hearing their stories makes it easier for me to talk to people as an introvert because I'm not good at chit chat, but I'm good at listening to your stories and adding in the same stories that I might have. Mm. So you're good at feeding off of people's energy, not creating it. Correct. Correct. You have to be a chameleon and morph to the situation as an introvert because you just can't have Mm. one style. Because if it doesn't work, you'd be in a panic as an introvert saying, no one's talking to me now. What do I do next? So you have to be somewhat more flexible. Maybe that's why I'm a chameleon. Are you a chameleon too? Yeah, I I just blend right in, man. So interesting. So real quick, just for the people that don't know, most of the listeners here, I would say, are in the business world. Um, But what was the concept? How did Lunch with Lori actually get created? Because how did it get started? Well, it really got started on a golf cart with Pat Miller at a chair okay. at a uh, MMAC golf outing where I shout out Pat shout out Pat <laughs> but at that moment it wasn't a shout out Pat I redesigned <laughs> his business plan and like the 15th hole this he turns to me and he goes get the fuck out of the cart <laughs> he goes I'm sick of you I don't want to talk to you anymore and leave me alone and so I shut up and went in silent mode, which felt great as an introvert for a while. Yeah. But the funny thing is, like a month later, 
I meet Pat again. He goes, you were right, and I have a gift for you. I created a hashtag called Lunch of Lori. And I go, well, what do you do with a hashtag? I didn't know what you do with a hashtag. I started using it. By then, I already taken people out to lunch. So I had the perfect hashtag, Lunch of Lori, and I'm taking people out to lunch. And it just took off from there. And what did you talk to people about? Their life stories. One of the things as an introvert, and I teach people how to network is, if you're an introvert, you can't just do things on the fly because if people don't respond to you, you're going to be in a panic. So you need a series of predetermined questions about people. What's your hobby? What do you like? Do you have kids? Where's your favorite vacation? Mm, By having those questions, you could interact and get down to a personal level with a lot of people. And so that was one of the dirty little secrets that got to have those questions ready to go. Now, did you buy lunch or did people I would buy always buy. Own? I would always buy lunch. Wow. I would. Or so a I lot have, of dollars went into this lunch with Lori concept. Um, it probably, I think I added it up. It was like $10,000 over three years. <laughs> a lot of lunches. But it would have been a lot of marketing. Yeah. As a marketing guy. <laughs> right. As, as we talked off script, lunch yeah. with Lori, uh, besides taking people to lunches, there was no money spent really on lunch with Lori. And yet I go place all over town and mention my first name and you go, you're the lunch with Lori guy. That's, that's having a brand. Man. And, and so you created kind of not on purpose, but you created a platform to allow your introvertness to not kind of hinder your ability to network. Correct. And that was COVID forced that. So it was not planned. I couldn't take people out to lunch anymore. People wouldn't go out. So, and there's another Pat Miller thing is he goes, what are you going to do next? And what he really meant is when you're going to go virtual, when you're going to go online. Yeah. And I had as an introvert, Going online, going in front of a camera, speaking publicly. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that's like terror. That's like I was locked in my room for three months. I wouldn't leave thinking about that. Yeah. And I finally did it and came up. But when I do something like that, I have to come up with my own way of doing it. And I decided I hated regular networking online. I'm going to change it. And some of the things I changed was you have to connect with people before you come to the meeting. Even as much as I preach that, no one does that. Mm -hmm. And you can't do an elevator pitch because I'm sick of Zoom elevator pitches. <laughs> you had to answer 10 personal questions about your life. Yeah. And then we're going to talk about those questions with everyone else there. And that's what made Lunch with Lori successful. It broke the mode of Zoom calls. <laughs> and that's one of the things as an introvert, you have to network at a personal level because you're not good at fake small talk. You can't go, how the Packers do, how the Brewers do. <laughs> That's not an introvert's way, but, but if you have an experience, for here's a great example. Lunch of Lori, one of the guys asked, what hobby you want to try? He goes, I want to go fishing in the Milwaukee River. Well, I live on the east side by the Milwaukee River, and I go fishing in the Milwaukee River. We go fishing together. He's come over, had beers. He's an advocate. Me, I would have never done that with small talk. It took yeah, asking yeah. a question of what do you want to do to act actually get a friend out of it. And so just real quick, I want to mention this because I've, I've heard this from, um, it was a, a video on TikTok and I forgot who it was, but it was a guy that's, um, he trains billionaires and he said that most billionaires are introverts. I could believe that. He said, I think it's like um, only like 2% of all billionaires are actually extroverted. And part of that I think is your introverts, and this is a generality, you're more creative, you think about things more, you put more time into details. It's like Launch of Lori, I wanted to create my own networking venue. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to copy what other people do. I wanted, to, I wanted to have a differentiator. And I think a lot of introverts, very successful ones, have a differentiator. Hmm. They, they have something that sets them apart. Sets them apart. From the crowd. Yeah, and I do think you think that's, that's why introverts naturally do business better than extroverts? I'm not sure they do business better, but I think their business are more thought out. They put more effort into it. It's not on the fly. It's a more determined purpose when they do it. Do you feel like extroverted people can adapt introverted qualities? As an introvert, I have adopted extroverted <laughs> qualities. I, I, think, I think they can, but it's difficult. I, and here's the only, I don't know about you, because you say you're yeah. an introvert. Yeah. My trick is I act as an extrovert for X hours in a day. This is what, I, was, like this what I wanted to get it's into. It's like an actor this in a play. It. Because actors do all kinds of parts that are not their core, and you watch them on a movie, you think that that's how they are in real life. I act that part. And by doing it as acting, I know there's an end to it. Once the script is done, 
the people pack up the cameras, I'm back to my regular life and I can feel good again. I, this is exactly what I want to get into because, um, so I was, I did hip hop for years and years and years. And every time I would go and perform or go out there, it was always, I knew I had to do something for X amount of time. And when I'm done, like I didn't, I was just itching to get back to the hotel. I was just itching to go back, you know, to, to back to chill mode. Because I, but because after I'm done, because once people are like, "Hey, man, come out to this or go to this," I'm like, now I'm like, oh, now I gotta do this, and I've already spent all my energy <laughs> going out performing and do and putting on a show, basically. And now it's like, you want me to put on a show again? I'm already done. I'm spent. So if I had to like really go out there, I mean, I was, I was dragging, you know. But now, you know, and I would say even in, now in the business setting, it's the same thing. You know, if I have to speak or if I have to go, you know, kind of go in front of a group or network or, you know, especially especially within a group, uh, I do better one on one. But I would say that in a group setting, I mean, I can put on the show, but afterwards I'm just like, oh, OK, be a couple seconds, couple seconds. <laughs> and it's funny, talk when you go into a group setting, I always said uh, you could spot the introverts because they're on the wall at an event and they're when they're successful acting as an extrovert they're in the center of the room. Yeah. So really that migration from the wall to That's the center funny. is a progression of being being an introvert acting more as an actor. It's our true authentic self, but we put on an act for that a limited period of time. Correct. Because we have to perform. And that's why I am not a believer in elevator pitches. I and again, I create all this stuff black box because I don't read anyone else's books. I created a thing called a networking persona, which is your differentiator and a pitch and what you give. And each situation you go into can have a different networking persona because you're matching what you want to accomplish where, with where you're at. And that makes hmm. it easier. Instead of coming in always the same and then somebody asks me something and throws me for a loop and gets me uncomfortable, yeah. I adapt that chameleon again. I have a networking persona for different groups. Describe a little bit further on the persona um, effect. Um, the persona effect is gives me a 360 lorry. So I'm giving, if, I, if there's a, a group, of, say we have a networking group or meeting, yeah, yeah. I'll give people tips on networking in there. So I'm giving something. Mm -hmm. I'll do a post for an organization after an event, I'm giving something. So to yep. give is part of it, be known as a giver. Yep. The differentiator is, Lunch of Lori adds a differentiator and I'm different because I tell stories and might not do a regular pitch. Mm -hmm. And my pitch, I make it generic so you have to have questions. I did it today, I was at a uh, IBAW sales round table and they said everyone do their pitch. And I said, I help people fix their problems and find opportunities by rolling up my sleeves, sitting next to them, getting shit done. Then I asked the room, what do I do for a living? You wouldn't yeah. know what I do for a living. You have to ask questions. Gotcha. The questions are the key to success for an introvert if they want to be like an extrovert when they network. So you got to ask questions. And it's a certain type of question. Something yeah. I was very fortunate. Uh, it's questioning um, in a wide to narrow view with a series of cascading collaboration questions that re-verify what you heard in the beginning. Doing that funnels you to some goal. Okay. Okay, so you want to reclassify the questions to go further, like basically to dig deeper. Well, first, no, first you start wide. Yeah. We, so wide means, yeah. uh, for example, if there's a, a someone asks a question and the answer is right off to the side, mm -hmm. if you start narrow like most people, you will miss that answer right away. Okay. Starting wide is the world, the whole world is your possible answer set, mm -hmm. and then you work in. Most people start too narrow. And when you start wide, gotcha. it gives you a lot of possibilities to ask questions, talk about things. It just makes it easier to have conversations. And you can't discover people. You know, I, that's, that's why some extroverted people that are salespeople, they, they go way too quick to, you know, what they want. You know, they don't look at, I really want to build a rapport with this person. I want to find out what their story is and really understand who they are. Because really, if, with that approach, you actually learn more about that individual to know how to even navigate with a sales you know, position. And as a 
introverted, didn't know any better. When I would first network, I would go right for the kill because I didn't know how to talk or ask questions or do anything. That is not a successful way. <laughs> Sign to here, here, and here. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And in fact, if I have only one regret, that I didn't learn how to network the way I network now 30, 40 years ago. Where's the book of how to network as an introvert? There's little pieces out there, but there really isn't as much. And a lot of the stuff was written True. before Zoom. True. How do you how do you network as an introvert on a Zoom call? Yeah, because you yeah. How do you stand out? Because if everybody's you know going around, the only time you're ever going to speak is if somebody calls on you. <laughs> no, there's one little secret is be the first to put your contact information in the chat. In the chat. In, in the chat, put questions in the chat. So introverts could do things like that to detail that most people don't, mm -hmm. and then you could lead it. Because then they'll say a lot of times, uh, put your information in the chat like Lori did. Yeah. So really, introverts could learn to do Zoom and ask questions and follow up. Do the things other people don't. Be your own differentiator. So that's that's kind of the, the main thing I'm getting from the introvert side is you got to set, you know, your own position and be that be that difference maker. You know, like you have to stand out, but in your own individual way. Correct. It has to be what works, yeah. what works for you. Yeah. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Yeah. The people who I originally don't get along with the most in the business world are my best friends mm. two years, three years later because because we forced that first encounter forced us to reassess what went wrong and then really find out about yeah. each other. That was a funny time. <laughs> it is, but I, that I've had funny, that. Cause I've, you were, you were taken, you were taken back by one side and then I was taken back by your response. But I've had a Pat Miller's another example of that. But what I found is if I have X amount of time on the earth, I rather take those risks. That's the other thing an introvert has to take more risks than an extrovert to get noticed. Mm. Cause if you don't take the risk, take more, you'll risk. never get noticed. And so they're yeah. going to be an introvert your whole life. And there are, like you said, successful introverts. Yeah. But for the average person being an introvert in a world where you have meetings and stuff, it's very difficult for them to be successful. Okay, let me redefine networking. Yeah, yeah. Networking is the sale of the most impro important product in the world, yourself. And so every time you are with somebody, you are selling. Every and time. most people do not understand that. Every time. It took me forever to learn that. Every time. You're going to control your brand or you're going to let others control it for you? Correct. You know, that's that's basically what it comes down to. And, and if you don't promote out who you are and sell yourself and let and basically create the narrative, other people are going to create their own. So there's a great thing. You're a marketing guy of, a, of introverts you have met in your career. Mm -hmm. How many have a personal brand? That's a good question. I would say not many, not many. And that's one of the things. So they have no differentiators. So yeah. now when they have to act that part, they're already missing one third that's required to be successful. <laughs> you gotta have some kind of brand. You gotta have something yep. that people remember you by. Yep, yep. Well, it's lunch for you. It's lunch, it could be It's something. a hat for me. <laughs> it, it's something, but, but having nothing <laughs> leaves you at a big disadvantage in a world where there's so much noise out there. We live in a world of 10 second sound bites. How are you gonna be noticed in a 10 second period? These are good questions that I think anybody should should really you know reflect back on themselves and say okay how can i be remembered in 10 seconds if you have if you're uh, you know the if you're 30 seconds on an elevator with somebody how can you be remembered um within that time if you're networking how can you stand out are you going to give the same pitch over and over again or are you going to figure out something that's a little different you know it sets you sets you apart are you going to be the first one to ask that question in the zoom chat so do you think that there's a, a negative side to being an introvert in business? Absolutely, because people will look at you and think you're antisocial because you don't want to go out and have a drink with somebody. You might be more quiet when you meet new people. Um, you're going to have a harder time being a salesperson because you're not going to want to talk to people or ask for the sale. <laughs> you're going to you're going to really fear rejection a lot. There's a lot of negatives to it. And they don't have to be negatives if you're taught ways around each of those situations. But again, I, I've searched. I cannot find one college class in the country that teaches networking. And one of my retirement goals is, wow. it, and, and I wrote the course. It's written. I don't have time to, to do it yet. Mm -hmm. But where do you learn how to do that? It's all learning on your own. And if you don't have any, if you don't have a mentor to show you the tricks, it takes a lot of energy and you go through 
One thing, introverts don't like failure. They take failure hard. They take it as rejection. And so if you have to go learn that, if you have to learn that on your own, you're going to give up. The rejection is going to kill you in the beginning. But when you learn that the rejection is the price of success, yeah. then you keep on doing it. And you're not taught that anywhere. Yeah. The failure is actually what's going to get you there faster. And this is another Pat Miller thing. I'll give him a plug. He gave me, I think, Lorieisms. One, one of my most... Um, really important organisms is failure is the cost of good sold of success. If you are not failing, it's impossible to be successful. Yeah, because you can't do everything perfect. You can't experiment. No yeah. Experiments fail all the time. And, that, and the whole th philosophy is fail fast. That's actually how you're going to grow the fastest is if you're able to fail fast and not be such a perfectionist and because it's going to take you forever to do anything. That's why for 60 some years I was a terrible networker because I failed slow, slow. failed long. Yeah. And didn't realize that you have to <clears throat> fail fast and move on. Because there's another thing that drives people. Most people don't have this necessity. When it's necessary for you to change, you will change. If there's no necessity factor, you won't change. And that, that's kind of the, the same thing. I kind of say that as in your comfort zone, or not in your comfort zone. If you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never really grow. If you're out of your comfort zone, that's where you're forced to make adjustments and make corrections. But who's the person who forces you out of your comfort zone? That's what I'm talking about. Who makes it necessary for you to get Sometimes out Sometimes it's yourself or it could be others. It is. It could I, be situations. I was lucky. It could be, I, you yeah. know, circumstances. It could be <laughs> I had all bunch, types of stuff. I had a bunch of woman mentors who said, if you don't get out of your comfort zone, you'll never achieve the goals you want. I wanted to make yeah. a lot of money and have my own business. He goes, you won't do it. And they held my feet to the fire for a couple of years. That got me through the breakthrough. Because once you break through, it's easier to do it on your own. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and the other part that you just said is critical. I believe that everybody should have a mentor in their life. Um, sometimes they're seasonal mentors, you know, that come by. Um, some, you know, that teach you these, these really... Um, impactful lessons, but I would say that for introverts in particular, you definitely need a mentor. And that's something else. Because that's the push, you know. That's true. <laughs> but, but in our world, we become, and I'll ask this question for, for you. How many mentors versus coaches do you see? What's the ratio of mentors to coaches out there? Lots of coaches, few mentors. There's a reason for that. You, you, <laughs> Because a mentor is not a coach. They're not the same thing. They no. have different purposes. No. And really, when you understand that, mentors will mentors have lived through what they're going to help you on. Mm -hmm. A coach has not always necessarily done that. 100%. And so yeah. um, when I mentor someone, help them in networking, and they say, that's too hard, you don't understand, I could look them in the eye and say, no, I do understand, because I was you five years ago. And that's the power of it. Mentors also pick who they want to help. Coaches are businesses. They mm -hmm. want to take people in to make money. Mm -hmm. Mentors are very selective of who they want to help. Very selective. And, and nine times out of ten, mentors are actually free. That's one thing I teach in networking. People don't understand. They go, Lori, why do you give so much? You go take people to lunch. You do all this stuff. You don't get paid. Well, because over time, the energy you put into a network does come out. There's only two things you don't know, when it's going to come out and where, but if you give enough, you will get your share of those outputs. And the outputs are powerful. It could be an introduction to somebody who gives you a big assignment. It doesn't have to be a lot of small things. It could be one big thing. depends what you do. But if you don't keep at it, you can never get that output energy. And you don't know how big it's going to be. You don't know how big it's going to be. That's, that is something that, you know, because people will be like, man, I've been doing it. Because some people have been doing something for years and years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, they get this, they get that big payoff. You know, they get that opportunity of a lifetime. And then people are like, man, if I would have just done that, you know. But it's like, you, you wouldn't have done it. You no, wouldn't you, have done it. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> you, just, you just want the other side of it. <laughs> well, which goes back to the other place. Introvert, know you're detail-oriented. You think about details. And one day, after a bottle of vodka, I won't lie. Um, <laughs> a bottle? A bottle of vodka. A whole bottle. Now we're talking like, like no, many no, bottles, no. talking no, about an but, but, but a good amount of vodka, I realize that networking is based on advanced mathematics and science. The mathematics is the power of exponential growth versus a linear growth. Most people mm -hmm. go into networking and think it's linear. That's why introverts quit. 
I went out today. I put effort in. I got no return. I went out yesterday. Put effort in. I got no return. Yeah, yeah. That's a linear approach. When you think of it exponentially, it takes 500 of those little things to get the line to move up at all. Yeah. So if you accept yeah. that, where you think you failed, you're really on the road to success. And the other parts where we talked about energy, it's based a law on the laws of conservation of energy. Networking requires energy. If you don't put the energy in, it's like blowing up a balloon. If you don't blow air in a balloon, there's nothing in it. Networking requires energy. But where I talked before, where it bounces out, you put enough energy in, mm -hmm. some of the energy is going to bounce back to you. Those are two scientific and math laws that nobody talks about in networking. You can't change those. That's why even for me, it takes 24 to 36 months to get networking to work and start giving you business opportunities. Wow. And that's normal. Wow. So, I, I mean, the expectation of that, if that was outwardly told to people more often, as like, this is the standard, I think a lot of people would network differently. But here's another Lurieism. Sales are not profits. Profits are not cash in a bank. You could have all the sales in the world and have no money. So the, <laughs> is the right metric sales or the right metric it's going cash from a in finance guy though well it is but, <laughs> but think about it, think because people think it's true it's true many things in the world we look at the wrong metric as the as the benchmark it really should be i can't tell how many business owners i go with who would give after the fact money in the bank versus their high sales rate mm -hmm. because more and more sales takes more and more money yeah you got to have a controlled sales rate to have money in the bank right but but you're not it's not reinforced because almost everyone goes for the, give me the hockey stick sales growth. <laughs> and then six months later you're going, how do I finance the receivables? Cause yeah, now I have, yeah. I have a million dollars on the street. <laughs> yeah. we're, talking about, we're talking about networking so heavily. What would you say to someone that has networked for, you know, five years, six years, and they're just, they're still kind of at the same spot. They probably forgot that it's about long-term relationships, not transactions. Ooh. I see that in Lunch of Lori all the time. The best salesmen are the cockiest and get it wrong networking ones in a Lunch of Lori event. Because they want to go right to their elevator pitch. They don't understand why they can't sell right away because they're not understanding those relationships um, make a difference. And here's why, here's another Loriism. You network to build an army of advocates. You don't network mm. to build sales. You want an army of advocates because as a marketing guy, mm -hmm. here's my metric, not to outbound how many, how many times I go out and contact people. It's the inbound. How many times people come to me, right? That's the metric that matters. And if you have an army of advocates, you will get a higher ratio of inbound people coming to you with, with requests. So it's all about mindset first, you know, how are you, What's your expectations? What's your goals that you're setting for yourself? Get the right mindset around that, and then you plan your attack. I just, I'm, I'm here for a transaction. You know, you're, you're going to get let down. <laughs> you're going to get Unless let down. Unless you're in a transactional business where you'll be very successful. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you say mindset. You hear that a lot with coaching now, mindset. Mm -hmm. I'll contend there's a more important part. And I talked about it in my sales roundtable today. It's the implementation of what you want to do. Most people could think of the mindset, conceptualize that, because it's easy in your, brain, in your brain to do that. It's a lot harder to take the physical actions to implement. You don't that, need... <laughs> no, that's true. But look, look at this podcast. Yeah. We talked about doing a podcast. Yeah. But until we actually implemented oh, yeah, and yeah, made yeah. it happen, yeah. account, we talked about it for a year almost. <laughs> so the implementation is where people just don't take that step because they're afraid of... It. I always thought it was the risk of failure, even for me. It's the risk is the risk of success. Mm. Success scares people more than failure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And for so sure. we look. Yeah. What if this actually works? What if it actually works? <laughs> now what I got to do, do this for a living. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I never have time to go sit in my reclining chair yeah. anymore. <laughs> it's true. It is true. It's your true. calendar gets booked up if you're yeah. a good networker. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So last, last thing. Last thing here. So you've built up. I would say quite a brand for yourself. How important is that branding for a business and also for yourself? And I say that because you're, you're a unique, you know, individual, I would say. You broke through the mold and, and, and really kind of forced yourself to change in this way. Because there's, there's plenty of, you know, guys and gals out there like you. They're like, oh, no, camera's not for me. This is not for me. I'm not going to do this, you know. So what has that brand really done for you and was it worth it? Well, the brand didn't do what I 
thought it would do is make money on its own. But what it did, networking is a non-confrontational, easy to talk about subject. So I could talk to the president of, this is a real example of a, of a major bank in town, go to an event and he goes, I love reading your stuff you post on LinkedIn and stuff and get an audience with a top guy mm -hmm. where if I called and say, hey, I wanna talk to the top guy about accounting services, yeah. click. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the things it does, it's a door opener. Having a personal brand done right is a door opener for your businesses. Mm. And that's the key thing. Um, people think, well, why do I need a personal brand? Well, a lot of businesses, the person is the business and they gotta have a brand. They have that's to. That's instant recognition. But everyone says, well, I have a personal brand. Now business will come right away. No, we talked before, yeah. it won't. But it does open the doors. And imagine if you do that in your 20s with a personal brand, I'm gonna be 65. The time you get up there in years, mm -hmm. you, you won't be able to handle the business you right. create from that. Right. Branding is, re is really important, but it's not the end all be all. You know, you have to know how to still execute. And, um, and, and, and what you've created, what I call is hosting the party. You know, like you've created a platform now that um, you're leveraging and now you have something to leverage against. So if you're, yeah, like you said, you're, you're just going in and if you were just sending a cold email to somebody or cold calling, it go they're gonna be like, who's this guy? My calendar's book, I don't have, you have nothing to offer. You're just trying to take. So once again, giving. You know, it, now with the lunch with Lori, you, you have something to give to somebody. Hey, they're getting a free lunch. They're also getting, or maybe it's the, uh, the Zoom version where it's like, hey, we're all networking. You're, they're there meeting a ton of people, having real conversations. It's not this salesy thing. Now you've created a platform that other people now want to get on, and you're not, you're not asking for anything. Now, if something gets reciprocated through that, then great. It will. <laughs> it will. And actually, when I talk to people who come to the last point, which I didn't, didn't plan this either, my platform is diverse. Mm. It isn't like all a, a Brookfield Chamber, Brookfield businesses, yeah, yeah. my turnaround management association, just turnaround people. I get from the hairdresser to the CEO, and that's one of the things that makes my Lunch of Lori events unique, is the diversity of who comes and the stories you hear from all walks of life. You don't get that in very many networking platforms, no. the range of diversity. And people go, well, why would you want the hairdresser to come to your networking event? Well, what if her uncle owns a hundred million dollar <laughs> yeah, company exactly. and she was just there and heard that the CFO just right. dropped dead and they need someone. Always network with the second and third connections of your primary you people know. because they, those people always get ignored. Yes. So example on LinkedIn, there's a, a Lori tip. I, if, if I have a post out there and there's second and third connections that view or comment, I send each of them an invitation to connect, saying thank you for liking the post I'm in. Here's what I do, can we connect? Mm -hmm. Mine your connections. Oh, gold. Gold has been dropped on here today at the Forever Podcast, and um, I, thank you so much for, for oh, coming on. thank you on. for having me. Um, I, you know, we can't give these people everything. No, we can't. <laughs> we gotta give them They gotta come sizes. to a Lunch of Lori, and I can't have them come yes. to the next one, because the next Lunch of Lori is a live event, and it's oh. booked up already. Wow. Live event. Live event. 35 people signed up and paid. Well, cool. Well, cool. Where can people find you at? Um, go to my website, www.lunchwithlaurie.com. And it's L-O-R-R-Y. For many years, people called me Larry. It's really, I always tell them it's Larry with an O. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so much once again for being on, uh, on the podcast. And if you're listening to this podcast, um, Definitely, you know, drop us a subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, especially if you're on um, YouTube, uh, as we want to continue to produce uh, more of these and make sure that people are really getting a lot of knowledge and actual value from these podcasts as we're diving in. So if you love this content, definitely uh, drop a like and a follow and definitely follow my man, uh, my man, Lori, because I mean, Connect amazing man things can, it can yeah. happen through this. And like you said, you gotta, you gotta connect, you gotta network. It's just the way of life. It's only, you know, I always say that the other thing, the thing that you want is always on the other side of a door that somebody has the key to. So you definitely need to network because <laughs> you're not going to be able to get there by yourself. So thank you so much. And uh, until the next episode, peace. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell for more amazing content that we're going to be putting out. And don't forget, you can change your circle to change your life.